everybody, Shell Broad next here with another episode of Stager Talk. And I am super excited today because I have Tamara Preto on today. We're going to talk about selling your business. How are you? I am well, Shell. How are you today? I am fantastic. I am super excited to have you be a speaker at ResaCon this year. Um, I'll tell you why. The industry, we've come a long way. I've been in, this, in the industry for about 21 years now. And um, back then, you know, somebody had been in business for a few years and they decided they wanted to, you know, hang it up. They had a fire sale. They just liquidated. Yeah. And now, woo, we have seen the tides have turned and people are yeah. actually building businesses that are valuable and that they can sell. Correct. There are lots of options, right? Lots of options other than the thought of just liquidating. Yes, for sure. So can you just tell everybody briefly, what is what does value acceleration actually mean? Sure. So value acceleration is all about working to build in specific steps and stages to build more value into your business, right? And so there's several things that we look at. We look at your human capital, the people that you have. We look at the brand, your brand recognition, the strength of that. We look at your processes. And one of the other key things is really figuring out, can this business run without the owner? Right. So helping to build in value in all of these different places so that when it's time to make an exit, whether that's whether you're going to choose to sell that to management, to some of your employees, a strategic partner, if you're going to recapitalize, there are all these different opportunities to think about. So we work over the course of time with business owners to ensure that they get that max value when it's time to make some type of a transition. So it's um, it's really about connecting the dots, isn't it? It is it's to be the name of your company, connecting it the is. dots. Yes, it is. Yes, it is all about connecting those dots, and it's not something that happens. It can happen over the course of a few months. The idea is, uh, as a certified exit planner, helping business owners understand that exit planning is good strategy, as well as the fact that we should be working on this over the course of. 24 months or more to get the most value built into the business so that when that time is ready for whatever that transition looks like, again, you're you're reaping the benefits of all the time and energy that you've put into this, this business over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And I would think even to make it um, even easier, systems and processes to put into your business. I think a lot of us um, as entrepreneurs, I know I've done it, um, you start out and you got all the great ideas, it's happening, you're making it work, you're pulling all the strings, it's all happening for you. But then certain things, well, well I'm just not going to focus on that so much, or I'm not going to mess with standard operating procedure manual and all those. Sometimes it's those little things that kind of fall through the cracks, like an SOP manual Correct. that if you did it from when you first started your business and add, added to it and was massaging it, it's a living, breathing document all the time and changing. Not only does that just help keep everything straight for you as you're running the business, but also your team members, but then you have that and it can run without you. It, it, it can. And that's, that's one of the things people overlook all of the time, right? So it's one thing what you think your business is valued at. Right. The question is just like a house, right? Uh, in the eye of the beholder. The, what we need to do is build a business that is attractive to those on the outside, that when they look in, they see, oh, there is a process in place. They do have good people who can take the reins and who can run, and they know what they're doing. That's value. Right. So building up those processes, making sure you have the right people on your leadership team. Or again, if you're a solopreneur or a small organization, just making sure that you have those things in place is what we really focus in on. Yeah, absolutely. So when somebody is more of a solopreneur, you have a very small team and you decide that you do want to sell your business. How much does it come into play, especially something that's so I don't know if it's just particularly staging or maybe it's more that you're servicing clients, I would say. When you're in a, a, a business where you have a clientele, where you want to sell the clientele with the business, how difficult is that to navigate? Yeah, so I think it's all about thinking through um contracts, right? So again, just thinking about the different types of capital, you also have customer capital. So if all of your business comes from oh, one client, if that client goes away, that's obviously a problem. 
right? And so the client piece is also another one of the capitals that we look at. So can we go in and sign some contracts so that the person who's looking to acquire the organization feels like they have something that they're actually tangibly getting more than a list, right? Because if I'm buying a business or an organization that has long-term recurring revenue, something like that is much more attractive to me than if I'm literally buying here, the clients that I've worked with in the past, that's what you're buying. Those are, that has, those are two very different values, right? Absolutely. To an outside buyer. So yeah. when you have a client list, so would you help a stager, let's just talk about staging since we're stagers, um, would you help them to be able to navigate the conversations with their existing clients and letting them know that there's going to be a transition? I know a lot of people would, I would certainly want to do it and have a transition period where the owner stays on for a consultant to get you off the ground for a while and to help that transition be a lot e a lot smoother. Correct. And that's all in the art of the deal, right? So it's all in with that exit. What does that look like? How long is that former buyer willing to stay a part of it? Or are they looking for a clean break, right? So having those discussions and being really clear, if you're the person selling, that you know what your next step is. And if you're willing to put in, I'm willing to do this for six months or a year, whatever that transition time looks like, but being really clear as the person selling the business what you're really willing to do, or are you at a point where you've had enough and I just, I'm, I'm taking myself and I'm moving somewhere warmer, right. Or to a different, different place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I would be interested to know from a buyer's perspective, <clears throat> excuse me, from a buyer's perspective, do, do they typically, are they pretty much gung ho or do they have any um, reservations about buying a business where it is client-based that they're worried that those existing clients they won't like them or they won't get along or because I mean, theoretically they could spend a half million dollars on buying a staging business and sure. they could wreck it in 60 days. Sure. Absolutely. No different than probably maybe a real estate company, maybe a property management, you know, those kinds of things where there is yeah. a lot of that personal relationship. Um, and so I think, yeah, buyers are always timid. And um, so it's that's why it's so important as an owner to prepare ahead of time so that you are prepared for the questions they may have, for any objections, and to, again, really be able to step up and really prove what that value is and why you are pricing it at this level. Now, right. would you be able to tell stagers whether or not, let's say somebody came to you and they said, you know, I, I want to sell my business. Through the process of what you're doing, does it take a little bit of time or can you assess pretty quickly whether that's a business that is sellable as is versus um, like right now, my CPA is running some numbers for uh, my personal stables business and he's going to tell me which direction to go. Are you able to do the same thing with somebody to say, you know what, it's worth it for you to actually try to sell it or just shut it down and have it liquid liquidate it? Yeah, so we look at all of those options, right? So I don't do, um, you know, high-end certified appraisals like a CPA would do, but I have different tools and software that we can use to come up with what we think a true value is. And then we look at where you, what you think it is and where you want it to be. And sometimes that's in sync. Many times that is not in sync, right? And so that gap between what you want to sell it for and what it's really valued at. So then what can we do in the next nine months, 12 months to build that value up so that it is more attractive to then help someone, right? To truly sell. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, things are not in your, sometimes things are just out of your control, right? So like we, something's got to happen now. So then we would work to do the best that we can to pull everything together very quickly. The idea again, is if we can get people to think about this earlier, to start sooner, we can help ensure that they're going to get closer to what they want and what their business is truly valued at. Yeah. I would think it would be good even when you're just starting the business to have your goal. Yeah. I want to be in business. My goal is 10 years. And after 10 years, I want to sell it. And that's what right. everything you do from that point on is yeah. to support that end goal. Correct. So you build it around that. Absolutely. You make those steps. And some of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs and partnerships don't think about is their buy sell agreement from the very beginning. What happens if something happens to one of the two partners? Oh, yeah. Right? Because depending on where you live, you may now be in business with their spouse. 
right? Do you want that? And understanding, like we take it all the way back to what are the arrangements if someone wants out? right? It's one thing if it's me, right? My, my company, one person. Um, but it's a whole nother if you and I shall are in a business together and we didn't really go down the path of making sure we understood if someone wants out, what happens and how do we do that? And if someone, you know, there's, there's five things that happen a lot of times in business that a lot of people don't think about. And these are, it's called the five D's. And these are things that force your hand, right? Divorce, right? Yeah. So I, I'm now divorced. Now what happens to the business that either I own separately? Do I have to dissolve it to take care of other things, right? There's divorce. There's death, obviously. No one wants to talk about it, but reality, right? There's disengagement, right? If you're a partner, your partner is disengaged, right? They're just not really interested anymore. What what are you going to do? Um, so th- there's all of these things, or if you become disabled and you can't go to work every day, how do we, what is the plan for that? And just at least having opening conversations around those things to ensure that you're prepared to make some choices and decisions. Yeah, absolutely. So how does it come into play when people, you know, you go out and you get your LLC yeah. and then people <laughs> Always say with so much advice, such <laughs> advice. You yeah. want your LLC to be like kind of broke at the end of the year, spend everything out so you're not paying additional taxes on that. Well, when you're looking at that just on a straight PL and you're you're at that break-even mark, how does that affect the sellability of your business? And are those types of things taken into consideration? Yes. So that's one of the things that working with um, an exit planner can help you um, identify is yes, there's your tax number, but then let's figure out what those add backs are to see what the true value is, right? Maybe you're, you know, on paper, it's showing that you're, you know, making a small amount, but maybe you're you're pulling out, or if you're an S Corp, maybe you're pulling out five hundred thousand dollars for your salary. The person who's buying it has a choice. Do they want to pull that much out or not? Right. And then that, so we work to pull those things in and out to determine what the true value of that business is, what that bottom line value is. Because, you know, maybe you're in a super swanky office building and someone looking to buy your business maybe isn't as concerned or they already have space. Well, they don't have that expense anymore. Therefore, right? There's more dollars dropping to the bottom line. So there's a variety of things that we do to look at to get to that true number, not what's, we don't go off of what's on your tax return. That's awesome. That's good. I've always been perplexed about that. And it's like, I never really thought about it. Like, how does that exactly work? Um, I knew that you would have the answer. So we're good. (laughs) Thank you. So with, um, there's another question I wanted to ask you about um, profitability with your business. So mm-hmm. a lot of stagers, they just ask, what, what should our profit margin be? So is there a sweet spot or for a profitability percentage on all businesses? Is it the same for everything or is it different depending on the niche? Very, very different. It's very different. I mean, because you also have, right, like think about the capital going into, you know, running a farm. The capital needed to truly run a farm and the equipment is staggering, right? Yes, it is. I might be able to come in and start a consulting business with a computer, an office, a chair, right? And maybe my business cards and a website, right? And so profitability is is obviously important, but at the end of the day, it isn't just the profit, it's also the value because the value is where, right? People pay more if something has a better brand. People are going to pay more if you have your processes and procedures in place. Even if maybe your profit margin looks the same, businesses are more attractive based on all kinds of criteria. And that's what we need to do is build off of that and make sure that businesses are attractive to those on the outside. But yes, everyone needs to have profit, right? Number one. Yep. We yeah, must be profitable. Um, but, you know, cash flow, I mean, there's so many different things to look at um, when really looking at, at, at the specifics. So each, each industry is very different in terms of what that profitability could look like. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts to this. I would, I, I, I personally, if I had a business to sell, I don't think that I would want to navigate this by myself. Well, that's wise. Good, good. Nicely done. Uh, it, it's true. The idea is having someone that's in your corner, not necessarily, so, you know, 
the work I do, and again, this is an example, but the work I do in exit planning is I'm the advocate for the business owner. That's what everyone needs. You need to find yourself an advocate who's on your side, right? I'm not, I don't sell life insurance, right? So I'm not in trying to advise someone to, oh, well, you should do this. So then you can buy a product from me. My job is, you know, find an advisor of some sort that you as a business owner trust that can help guide you through the whole process, right? I don't do legal work, but I bring in legal experts to maybe supplement what you might have to make sure that you have the best plan in place so that you're paying the least amount of taxes when some kind of a transition happens, right? So the key is just finding someone to help you through that process. Part of the other thing that I do with my clients is I'm an accountability partner. Right. So I help ensure like, let's look at these things in the next 90 days. Right. Not all of it, but let's pick two or three things to knock off the list in the next 90 days. Right. And guess what? Then I check in in between. Right. How's it going? Did you call your attorney? Is everything set up here? Right. Um, So really finding someone that is that trusted advisor for you that will help you through the process. Yeah, I, I couldn't, now that I'm thinking about and talking to you more, it's like, I can't imagine it would just be silly just to, to try to do this because you don't know what you don't know. You don't. I mean, you you can really be miss. you could really be a undervaluing the business. You could be taken by somebody who might be a little bit more savvy than you are about this in the first place. There's Correct. just so many things that could go. There's right a lot away. to consider for sure. There's a lot to consider and it takes some time, right? And again, you want to have that control. Right. So that you can at any point be ready should an offer come some unsolicited offer. You want to be prepared to be able to be like, oh, I feel really good about this versus like, gosh, I really hope this is the best that I can do. Right. You just you want to know those things in advance. I think about, um, you know, um, aging, you know, a lot of friends dealing with aging parents. You know, the idea is you plan in advance for where they would want to go when it's time. Because if they fall and something happens to them, at that point, you're not in control anymore. Right. Right. You're you're being told they have to move to here. And this is where there's a space. And so the same thing with your business, right? Putting you, putting the owner in the driver's seat so that you're in control so that you can make the best choices and decisions on your timeline. Yep. I love it. So you've been doing this for a while. I think I read in your bio over 20 years, 25 years. Yeah. So I have been running businesses, helping small and mid-sized businesses scale uh, over the past, over the past 20 years. Yeah. But specifically doing it on my own the last three years. Yeah. This is awesome. I am so glad we found you. I don't even remember how I found you, but I'm so glad that I did. (laughs) It was your dear friend of mine. So yes, she happened to see. uh, Oh, she referred you then. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's yeah. right. I do remember this. So I'm super excited to have you. It's clear that you're passionate about what it is that you do. And um, like I said, stagers, boy, got to get your Risa con. If you are Can't at wait. any point in time, we want to look about selling your business. This is the session that you'll want to be involved with. Um, and uh, we are super excited to have you on board. I can't wait uh, for the summer. I'll get to meet you in person. I and know. Get everybody there and get as many people into that room for you as possible so you can help them as well. Um, here to help. Happy to answer as many questions as I can and you know, set people on the right path. Absolutely. Well, value acceleration as an exit strategy. You heard it here first, July 2023. Check out resaconvention.com. Thank you so much again for being on with me today. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you this July. I look forward to it as well. Thank you, Shell. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, everybody, happy staging. Mm-hmm.